Good morning, afternoon or evening and welcome to another Alpha 26 Zero AD replay commentary analysis. Today's matchup is between myself, Tom Zero AD and Zero AD Pop. No relations, by the way. He's not following Korean naming conventions regarding given name and surname order. But getting back to the point, we have him employing a Morian Elephant and Archer Smash versus my own Ptolemy Catapult Grind. So let's see how we each get on in this clash of the players with Zero AD in their handle. And welcome into the game. So in the north we have um, Zero AD Pot playing as the Morians. He's going to attempt, well you'll see, actually I'll let you know about it later. <clears throat> and I'm playing in the south as the, uh, oh gosh, the Ptolemies as usual. So gone for my standard approach, get your soldiers out cutting some wood near a decent wood line, get the women um, collecting berries and get three women to begin with who are going to start building houses. This is my kind of Ptolemy thing. So these go into a control group, they go and build some houses. Lovely stuff. Um, and obviously the cavalryman goes and collects all of the um, all the chickens. Now he has gone for, let's have a look. Did he also go for three women as well? Let's start yeah, off with. Yeah. He's doing good scouting here with, <clears throat> excuse me, do his scouting with his um, one of his archers, which is very smart. Uh, that's something that I am not doing. As you can see, I don't know very much at all about what's going on around me, which means I um, am in a disadvantage. So he, for instance, has just found out about this metal that he didn't know about. So he might want to put a storehouse around here, you know, and then he can collect metal and wood together and easily transfer between the two. He's also found out about some stone. Um, if ever you want an example of why it's a good idea to do this, um, Zero AD Pot is giving you a lesson in that right now. So he's just produced women and now he's building a storehouse right there. So he's going to collect um, the mineral resources very early. Um, and he's coming out here as well to get this uh, metal, which is, sorry, this um, uh, these berries. Which I think, yeah, let's wait and see. I don't actually remember exactly what I do now, but it looks very much like I've gone for quite a, yeah. um, a passive approach. I think I'll try and boom boom this through. He's not generally particularly aggressive, but he can be on occasion. So I've just got these guys collecting stone for that reason. So if he were to come in with cavalry, I've got these four um, who will be able to throw a lot of... Um, rocks at them which will be which will be nice uh, these guys are alternating between chopping down trees and getting the um, collecting wood so I'm slightly ahead in population at this stage um, he's got his I mean, did he get the he got the berry upgrade well done already transitioning to farming uh, sensible move here he could actually I would have probably said it would be made more sense instead of building this um, farmstead here to use the elephant here while at the same time um, putting a, a storehouse there because he oh actually he's got a storehouse here I was going to say he can't get any of the upgrades but he can because he's got his storehouse here so, but it's still interesting that he hasn't chosen to put one there um, maybe because uh, the, his rationale could easily be that um, the elephant can move in more like closer uh, closer to the wood line as it recedes as they they get into it who knows uh, but he is building a um a barracks and one of the advantages that the morians have is that their barracks only cost wood so if you've got a decent wood economy you can really really boom really really quickly and you get obviously an extra 10 percent um population so they're on 220 uh, my max will be 200 so I've got my people now. I've transitioned to food. I'm not sure. Uh, sorry, transitioned my food economy to um, fields, but it may be a little bit late for that, actually. I uh, should have done that a bit earlier. So as it stands, we're going to possibly run out of food very briefly. These guys need to be building another thing as well. So we've both got barracks. Um, oh, these three have become my new house builders. I've got 15 here, 18. So we've still got three that need to be doing something. But you can see where that um, lack of food has started to hit me. Um, so, yeah, a bit slow in the transition. 
for that, whereas he's not, so he's starting to fly ahead now. Very, very smart. Um, he had the advantage, I suppose, of the additional berries. I don't know if I... Yeah, the closest things I've got are all the way out there or out here, but... Yeah, another example of why scouting is so, so important. So if I'd known there were berries literally just out of sight there, I may well have looked to build out. Possibly not, though, actually, because it's a bit further than you'd think, but certainly could have put the barracks over here. So how many do we have now? Got 21. Hopefully we can have another load coming here. I'm trying to get as many... Um, slingers as possible um, as quickly as possible so let's yeah let's just see how he's going going another barrack so this yeah he's got that just producing archers and this yeah, will effectively make him un, un attackable if that's a word at this early stage but well done yeah. to him as well for getting himself into position with five fields before he's even finished all the berries that is exactly the kind of forward planning that will allow you to maintain a good strong economy and will allow him to presumably be able to push through here he's getting another um elephant so one of the things that i've seen him do i don't know if he does it in this game but it's a very very nice tactic is he actually pulls out a load of his archers early on so yeah, around this sort of time, and he'll just take an elephant off and go and start mining the resources in the centre of the map. Um, so if you've got like a critical yeah, mass of archers, so he's got 16, no, he's got more than that, I think, at this point. Yeah, he's got 18 so far, and he's getting more archers all the time. So if he's got like, oh, he's got even more possibly. Yeah, so he's got 20, and he's got more coming all the time. So if he's got like 30 or so um, archers, it's going to be very difficult for um for me to attack him because i've only got these camels i mean maybe a decent number of slingers could cause them problems but it's i think it's, it's a nice move i think to move for the minerals that are further away from your base to begin with and then give you these um left over for later on but here he is again seven fields 39 people gonna need to get those guys moving it looks like he's got some 11 there yeah 11 here that are doing nothing needs to get those those working i'm actually back ahead in population which is a bit surprising i think he's got a bit confused in the thing and i'm starting to now <clears throat> build a second barracks similar population but a lot of idle time which is not ideal from him at all so how many women do we have here 35 on seven fields yep got the upgrades getting the stone upgrade we'll probably get the metal one relatively yeah, soon yeah. after and now it's starting to go into metal so my hope here is that by getting stone and metal relatively early may well find that it can get a fast phase two so really get the to get all of those upgrades get it moving presumably yeah it should be hitting that pretty soon i've got plenty of um, stone and uh, sorry, what you call it? Stone and food. So there's no reason for delay. This is unfortunate. Well, not always poor planning on my part. I shouldn't have built extra. I need to get another um, house. Yeah, These guys could have been, you know, taken off of this for a bit to build a house. Can't, I'm housed. I can't be waiting for this one, which you have to walk all the way around to build starting to get these guys building some houses but again it's, it's poor choice really poor choice and that's hit me in that time i could easily have had a much larger there and here we go this again can't actually uh train as many people as i'd like but he's doing doing well with the metal that's nice i like it how many upgrades yeah he's got the same two as me but he is going for metal early, so I'm guessing that means he's going to want some metal-based upgrade of this. So this will be one, I assume, archery tradition. Um, once he gets into the thing, there will also be the other things. But you can see he's I think, almost yeah, exclusively, if not exclusively, yeah, exclusively um, training 
uh, archers so he just wants to get into that point i mean there is a, a strategy i've seen whereby you basically just create such a phenomenally long wall of archers with all of the upgrades that it's actually impossible for anyone to really get near you like i've seen them take out fortresses you know you have like 200 archers that are just there with all of the upgrades they're outside the range of anything towers barely last any time at all and fortresses go down as well and there's just nothing much you can really do even if you try and bring out siege weapons they get rid of a catapult in no time so you can't even like hit them with that i think maybe siege towers might have a chance against them um but you need quite a lot of siege towers i'd have thought uh, fully loaded to give yourself a chance so not not an impossible way around it but nonetheless still um something very important so i'm going to phase two he's presumably going to go to phase two relatively quickly as well he's a bit short on food 43 on nine so he's missing two are these the two yeah they are so these will be the 45 um five women to a field there you go oh he's even got people collecting food here which is interesting you don't often see that okay he's going to phase two i'm already there i need to do a fast phase three i've got basically what i need so i've got this one as well to try and get some cavalry i think if you're coming up against archer civilizations and your ptolemies it helps to have um some cavalry archers they're very very useful um in that they've just got extra health uh, particularly if you get this upgrade that i'm now getting so they will then have that which will be good building my kind of standard approach i like to go to the edge of the territory and build a um a military colony this kind of it protects you against phase two rushes so i mean it's still i mean in theory someone could be phase three but people generally aren't phase three at this stage but if you can get a military colony up around there it just gives you that thing it's very very difficult for someone at phase two to come in and actually attack you so if he had come in as it stands with god he's got uh, an extra 10 population but you can see like 93 archers um if i don't have if i have this built he basically can't get past the archers will be killed before they can wander around whereas if they um attack prior to that they can start to come in and really do it take over the houses cause all manner of difficulty so oh actually building the um lots of camels here right i thought that, that would be i assumed that was going to be um oh i forgot what they're even called like the forge and the blacksmith and the um not the oh gosh blacksmith and the market and i haven't and that is a real strategic error so finally getting a market and presumably two blacksmiths yeah but that could have been done two minutes ago that's now cost a lot of time i could have been phase three long before i mean he's is he getting those things he's getting three of them now so he's going to get as many upgrades as possible he's not going for a market now this is what i was talking about his strategy earlier it's right interesting he's going to wall himself in and then basically just make himself very very difficult to to beat and kind of try to get a sucker punch in so I've, this was the first game that i played against him i think when he'd done this so you can see that we're, we're going at much the same time and i could have been already at phase three for a minute or two which would have changed the shape of things in this game completely because i would now be throwing catapults at him and that would make a big big difference um so i'm ahead in population i've got a load of um these guys just uh, of the uh, uh, cavalry archers i need to think about what i'm going to do one of the things you've only got nine fields and you do need to bear in mind if you are going to train a lot of cavalry you need a lot more fields which is uh, sometimes quite difficult to to deal with because you end up not being able to train as many cavalry as you want because you've got so many more women farming all the time to make sure that you can keep enough food to train enough cavalry it's like a kind of catch-22 so you see he's gone to phase three slightly ahead and now i'm starting to get some more 
I think I'm not actually training anyone. I'm not. Uh, because I won't. Okay. So I'm trying to keep some space in the population to train. Uh, yeah. I think this is one of the problems with 200 population games. They're quite difficult to um, to not find that you've accidentally gone to maximum pop when you don't want to, um, and you've not got any siege. Um, I say you in a very passive sense there. I really do mean me. I am uh, an absolute nightmare for that. I find that happens a lot to me, which really, really annoys me. Here we go. He's coming in. All right, what's his plan here? He doesn't know. He knows that that's my territory, but he doesn't know anything about what's there. So let's see. Okay, so you can see the, what can happen if you've got that. Killed. Killed one. And hurt a few more. So that has caused him some uh, to delay his thing. I mean, 114 of these guys. But again, he wants to come in, take these resources from my kind of area and there's not a lot I'm doing to stop him at this stage so I mean I do have plenty of metal around and stone should I need it later so it's not like I'm uh, desperate for these ones I mean these guys are, are they getting stone I think they are yeah that's stone okay but I need to really get so I've killed another couple of his archers who got sucked in um, just trying to make sure I've got enough stuff here to to reinforce how many has he gone for he's stuck on four actually i'm surprised by that he hasn't built any more barracks but you can see he's completely walled himself in now so his hope is that that's it he's also getting some elephants going and again he's, he's made a mistake there in not having his maximum population available but that will be resolved by this but at the same time that's not ideal. Now if I were to try and just, I've got my thing, uh, my siege workshop going up. I will say one of the things that I've really noticed about myself, I do I kind of obviously making these videos end up watching a lot of games back um, after I've played them. So um, whether I've won or lost, um, I think it's something that definitely that uh, players when they're starting out don't really think of like so someone who's probably just starting is like whoa you built seven barracks like that's actually not that many i would prefer to have 10 or 12 um but it's such a small population game that it's not considered that um much of a difficult like that there's that many necessary okay so i'm starting to attack him now and you can see what i want is to get rid of this elephant but he's very smartly going to use the elephant to soak up the um with virtually equal so but he he'll use his elephant to take the um what you call it take the hits and is he building another fortress right behind there he's trying to just keep as secure as possible and i'm going to carry on there but um yeah what i was saying was that despite knowing you need to build lots of barracks lots of um uh stables and things like that never occurs to me or hasn't until quite recently that should probably also build lots of siege workshops because otherwise you can wait for absolutely ages i mean the other there's two real issues one is that this siege workshop is located here because it's going to be protected by there uh, and by the civic center so there's going to be people around so that it doesn't get captured in all likelihood or so you would hope that said long way from the front line so another siege workshop would just allow me to reinforce much more quickly so he's continuing to use this absolute mass he's now building a next layer of walls which is something it's kind of similar to what you would do with in a catapult crush in that sense so with a catapult crush you you push forward with the catapults in an attempt to um, take out key buildings, defend the catapults. People come in trying to attack the catapults to take them out, aren't able to do so. They die, then you end up taking out the next thing and the next thing and so on. So we're going initially, flower is going to take this elephant, done. Well, uh, Hero's been a bit, bit crazy there, decided to run into something and wave at it, which, okay, it's not the actually the 
the worst thing in the world, but nonetheless, do I have the upgrade? That's a, another thing about having more than one of these is that if you had multiple, you can be training as well as getting the upgrades. Like, so, you see, instead of this taking like 40 seconds, it would be um, 25 seconds to get two if there were two of them. And now we're just going to take out these walls, um, which is like fine take out the walls but what i really need to do is be attempting to push on a bit so let's see if it's possible to uh, build another fortress gradually creep forward use the fortress she's going to die and she's just getting into ridiculous positions she's supposed to stand there near here so that these benefit from her aura of being able to um, attack more quickly that's it that's what she should be doing not running into her death so we've got another fortress coming in here so that again i mean this is quite important because one of the things that with this kind of defensive thing is you see his his strategy has been quite carefully thought out gradual creep of walls make it difficult to get at his people while at the same time he's trying to take resources from my side of the map knowing that if we look back here he's not even touched like some of the resources which are inside his territory i've got no way of getting to so it's a definite possibility that it will just lead to me not being able to get anywhere i mean i would like to think oh, if we had another fortress over here let's have a look from my perspective yeah, if I'd been able to put one up around here, that would allow me to go further forward. And that would be really, really helpful. This fortress isn't actually in the greatest strategic position. Oh, look at that. I realised and did that to myself. I'm trying to take out that as well. But, which is good in that it will stop him from making any more... Um, elephants because they are going to cause problems and they're very good at taking out catapults and other siege weapons um but these guys are just kind of sat looking very eerie i mean the extra the fact that he's got those as well so this can this go up it has gone up okay just come back come back nope they're just going to run in and crucially some are just going to attack a, a fence post a completely useless fence post has just been attacked and cost me a load of soldiers brilliant great decision making and it also means that these guys are in big trouble because the elephants are coming oh, i've got a load of um cavalry ah who went round there and have managed to take out so, so i've got some champion cavalry which is all very nice these guys should find this much more difficult to get to actually defend the elephants so the elephant should go down relatively easily. Okay, just need yeah, to take see. out that. There we go. And as you see, this absolute yeah, see. incredible volley of um, things has taken out a catapult and nearly taken out yeah, another see. one. But need to find a way to get more of these guys. Don't be silly. So I don't actually have a thing yet. Has he got things? He hasn't been getting the upgrade. He's got the one that gives you um, good stuff. Okay, where's he coming? Does he have more elephants? He's got three of them there. He's at max pop though, so he needs to really get some more. He's going to try and come out here and get this metal again. And I will now see that and presumably make an effort to stop him this we're just taking out things so i'm at 193 i need another couple of things. so these guys should get all killed to death relatively quickly because we've got so much coming through but that ironically is going to allow him to train more archers um sorry elephants so here he goes, he's kind of walked round the side. Dude, let's have a look at upgrades. I've got... Uh, have I got everything? No, I haven't got the last two, so he's going to stop me from getting those now by taking this, which is very, very smart. On his, From his point of view. 
Um, are we able to actually take any of these guys out, really? Oh, they're aiming at the wrong people. Okay, and now I'm... Oh, they're, now they're just... Oh, dear, oh, dear. Why don't you just get in the place where I tell you to go? Okay, so he's going to try and come around with his army here, but these guys should take some quite heavy hits there. So I release a lot of archers, 39 elephant, uh, camel archers again. I was wondering as well, is his strategy here actually to lose these so that he can unleash... He's got five elephants, but is he just trying to unleash like hundreds of elephants all at once? So I'm on 189. Again, not getting the cavalry that I need. Not cavalry, sorry, the um, siege weapons that I need. These guys have taken out quite a lot, but he has replaced them. Yep, getting those. Training elephants galore. Don't be silly and cause yourself to die. Okay, they're going to cause themselves to die. It's not enough of you. It's... Uh, it's a suicide play, unfortunately, from these guys, and that's going to take a long time to replenish, so that was really, really poor. And now, let's have a look. Not getting anything there. Got a load more camel archers here, but again, there's 30 of them, but they're sat too far. If they had all been at that front line, there was a chance they could have taken out these guys then, but far, far too slow. Okay. Can these guys... He's going to take this out, I think. We should be able to take out quite a few of them here. Is this all of... Have I got all the camel archers at once now? Right, there are 50 of you, very nearly. But... Oh, once again, very, like, great use of an individual... They, oh my word no you're getting yourself in trouble and I still haven't got any healers which is really stupid as well okay and now oh, I've got more I just want to check got them coming with these guys yeah I'm training them in two they, I need more of those basically I need far far more um uh, stables to keep this up. I need to be able to replenish the archers a lot more quickly than And these guys just aiming at that thing. Why? Again, they're constantly being healed. It's very, very um, sensible play. This. Alright, I've got a lot of oh the why they keep why have they gone off to like aim at walls like the the AI decision making sometimes is actually is just beyond farcical like what pos there should be something that says okay if you've got a load of archers don't shoot at random walls just never shoot at the walls unless explicitly told so because walls are not going to be an issue for the that these guys yeah, want see? to do you yeah, i can understand if you say like no i want you to take out a wall like if you're using the archer thing but as a general thing no just no and he's got them again the elephants are doing very well they suck up so much damage and are these guys actually shooting the elephant? i don't even know he's got quite a few of them uh Dear. Cannot. Oh, this is full. Of people, come on, get out. Don't run off. And he's doing well to do that. We've got another elephant dead, but this is getting very dangerous now. Right. Population's getting very, very low. These, not producing anything. Why not? Very, like, really not good. Plenty of resources. 
should be producing stuff, but aren't. This guy is shooting an elephant. These guys are wandering to their deaths. No one's attacking the actual elephants, taking things out. And, yeah, realised that is dead. As soon as he took the, the thing, that was it. Game over. It was a crush. At that point, I'd lost too much. So you can see, um, yeah, that's the thing. It is 100% sucker punch. Wait for you to kind of just overcommit in an attempt to take them out. Let your uh, the AI make your troops make some crazy decisions and then take advantage. So it's nicely done. Like very well played. Zero AD pop. Um, and as you can see, his score is higher in terms of. Show me some charts. So I was ahead in total score until right near the end. I was ahead in economy the whole way through. He was ahead in military from, I don't know, about 25 minutes. But look at that, as he just absolutely destroyed it. And I had a slightly higher expiration. But who cares about that? Kill-death ratio, yeah, it was all, all crumbling, all falling apart. But having said that, I think he played um, a, a really smart, strategy it's the sort of strategy that um only works once because once it's you've kind of been sucker punched you, you don't allow yourself to get sucker punched again but um you know fair play to him so well done zero ad pot you won the first uh you know, uh, example of a game between two people with zero ad in their um handle uh on this channel so Obrigado e até logo. Uh, tchau.